Robert, can you give an example of a successful application of machine learning and a not so successful application of machine learning? Not just in technological terms, but in the term that counts the most, that is providing a service to a human user or a community of users. Yeah, so I've seen many examples of, of human the loop machine learning systems uh, be successful or, um, or, or um, not be successful. And I can think of um, uh, good examples in, in disaster response and, and healthcare. Uh, so I'm a, a professional disaster responder. I, I worked in post-conflict development for the UN uh, before I moved to Silicon Valley and I continue to work in, in uh, a disaster response today as, as well as being a, an IT professional. And uh, I've seen many uh, successful uh, cases of human in the loop, especially when adapting systems to new languages very quickly. Uh, so, for example, in 2010, following an earthquake in Haiti, um, I found and managed about 2,000 people in the Haitian diaspora to do real-time translation. Uh, so, we had this problem where um, uh, most people in Haiti speak Haitian Creole, a language that's not widely spoken elsewhere, um, and most people coming into Haiti to help respond to the earthquake only had English as a common language. Uh, and so we had um, uh, this language difference where we needed to translate emergency messages in real time from Haitian Creole into English um, so that international responders could, could understand them. Uh, so this was the, the human side of, of translation. Um, then we're able to um, additionally share these messages with services like Microsoft Translate and Google Translate, and that enabled them to build translation engines, machine translation engines, um, so that uh, very quickly they could launch the first machine translation systems um, between Haitian Creole and, and English. Uh, and then uh, using those systems, we could bootstrap if those systems weren't good enough automatically, correct them with humans, um, and then have the, the system be updated. So it was a, a human in the, in the loop cycle. Uh, so that was- in I, Sorry if I interrupt you, but yeah. Google Translate uh, existed before you're talking about a domain specific translation service between two specific languages so that you know it's really reliable and accurate which google translate not always is that's exactly right so none of the machine translation applications in, in 2010 supported haitian creole um it, it wasn't a language that was supported at that time um and uh in in less than a week in in uh, both cases microsoft and google were able to to release the the first machine translation engines for for haitian creole um so that uh, enabled um us to scale a lot of the communications um in in those regions um and uh this wouldn't have been possible without this very quick human the loop feedback system uh, if you're just building a machine translation engine on available data that you're collecting uh, at that time, it would often take people six months or a year uh, to collect the right data and, and align it and, and re release an engine. So having this tight feedback loop um, of humans correcting and, and updating translations enables us to ship these uh, machine translation engines much faster. Uh, and this is something that it, it continues to this day. Uh, so that was the, the first time we'd, we'd use this kind of human in the loop crowdsource feedback for translation in a disaster. Um, but uh, right now with COVID, uh, this is happening in, in dozens of languages worldwide, uh, especially with organizations like Translators Without Borders, um, where uh, they're employing speakers of, of uh, the languages that need COVID-related information um, uh, to translate uh, the most important pieces of information, which in turn feed machine translation engines. Um, so this is a um, really positive example of how we can use human in the loop machine learning uh, to very quickly build applications in areas where we didn't have data in the past. Um, so that's, uh, that's a positive example. Um, uh, however, um, I've uh, seen negative sides of this as well. Uh, so for example, uh, I was working with uh, UNICEF, um, UN uh, Children's um, uh, Agency in Nigeria, and they were working with um, uh, uh, with mothers who'd recently given birth are working in, in maternal health, uh, tracking things like the, the health, the weight, uh, the vaccines that a child has in, in about the, the first couple of years of its life. And uh, the people running this system were doing it all by text message and um, in, in uh, like a dozen different languages. And they were getting overwhelmed by the amount of messages coming in. Um, and so we wanted to start automating this system with machine learning um, so we could speed up um, um, uh, the response time. Um, and unfortunately, um, 
the the interface change that we made um, made it feel like a slower experience for uh, the people responding, the healthcare professionals responding to, to these messages. And we could see behind the scenes that machine learning was actually making things more efficient um, uh, because of the semi-automation, but the individual workflow uh, felt like it had slowed down from those healthcare professionals. Um, uh, so we didn't continue uh, with, with that product. And so I think that was a really important lesson um, that we had learned. Um, just like with any other application, you, you need to empower the end user of that application. Um, they, uh, they need to feel that machine learning is helping them. Uh, and if they're not, you're, you're not gonna have a successful product from a user experience point of view. Uh, so it points to the, the complexity of, of building out these kinds of applications successfully. Excuse me, maybe I did not understand, but the problem here was the interface. So not the, actually, not the actual engine behind that's right. That's right. Yeah. So the um, we could see in the engine behind that we were, were semi-automating um, uh, some of the responses or the categorization, and that the overall efficiency was going up. Um, but the user experience uh, for the professionals was that they didn't see that automation or that they couldn't experience that. Um, they could only experience that their interface slowed down a little bit because they're asking them to to, to create more tags um, uh, to um, to power the the training data. Um, and so that wasn't a successful um, uh, uh, deployment. Um, so you know, there's a very, very complicated human computer interaction or user experience considerations uh, that, that need to be taken into account, obviously in, in any kind of application that you build. Um, uh, but I think especially in applications using machine learning, um, if the, the end user doesn't uh, get to feel like they're benefiting from that, that machine learning.